good. All right, did you turn it on yet? Yeah, I just turned it on. Oh, you just turned it on. All right, okay. welcome. Um, welcome, this is lecture two. What do we have to, do I have anything to say? No, good. Um, can you, can you um, please close the door? We're gonna get started, guys. Just as the bell was ringing on Thursday, we were talking about, I think this is what we're doing, right? We were talking about indeterminate forms. Yep. Yeah. And um, we, were we were trying to delimit as x plus 1 of x2 minus 1 over x minus 1. I think we actually finished this problem, right? Just like, yeah. but the, it got cut off in the camera. But anyway, just to like recap, um, the idea is the first thing you do is you, you're trying to evaluate this limit. You're trying to find out what this function is doing when x is near 1. So you try to plug in 1, uh, and when you plug in 1 over 1, you get something of the form 0 over 0. Um, not actual 0 over 0, just approximately 0 over approximately 0. And um, you don't know what that is. As we discussed last class, that could turn out to be anything. So you got to try some stuff. Um, Ethan Chen, what do we? What's the algebraic move that we eventually realize is the solution to our problems? We factor the, the numerator. Yeah, we just factor. So just like facts of algebra, um, difference of cubes x cubed minus one can be factored as x minus one x squared plus x um, plus one over x minus one. These cancel, and this just becomes. The limit is x goes to 1 of x squared plus x plus 1, and now that's just 3. So the answer is 3. And we did this kind of thing last semester um, where maybe I asked you to like graph this function or whatever, and we could call this function f, we could call this function g, and what is the relationship between f and g? Yeah, abuses. They're the same, only uh, g as, wait, which one is that? I don't know, this one's f, this one's g. Okay, well, then f has, they're exactly the same, except that g has, is defined at 1, and f is not. Yeah, exactly. They're exactly the same function for all values except for 1. When you plug 1 into f, you get undefined. When you plug 1 into g, you get 3. So if you want to just think a little bit more concretely about what's going on here, I'm about how this is really not anything new. You could actually just graph this function g. And this is just a parabola, so we know how to graph that. Um, you can just complete the square. Did we do this in class? No, right? I did this in some different period. So if we complete the square, this is um, x squared plus x, like plus a fourth plus three fourths. And then that's x plus a half. Um, someone stop me if I do something wrong, but I think this is not wrong. So it turns out that the g function is just a parabola. And it's just the parabola with a vertex at negative a half comma three fourths. So bam, um, negative a half comma three fourths. And when I plug in zero, I get one. And when I plug in one, I get three. So there's really not that much going on here. We just have a nice normal parabola. This is the g function. And the relationship, just like you just said, between the g function and the f function is that they, are, they have the exact same value for everything except, uh, except 1. When I plug 1 into f, I get undefined. And so if you have experience graphing rational functions, you know that this is just a parabola with a hole in it. And so the limit now, it sort of just makes sense that this limit is 3 because as I get closer and closer to 1, my y values get closer and closer to 3. That's pretty cool. Okay, 5 was like basically the exact same thing. Um, you just factor the numerator and you guys got um, 2, right? Yeah. Oh. Okay, number 2. Um, number 2 is the limit as x goes to 0 of 5 sine 2x over x. Did we, did we have like sufficient class time for you guys to actually have any kind of conversation about this with the person next to you? We just um, did the no. First. <laughs> do you want to do that right now for two minutes? Sure. Okay. Let's let's have it. Let's have it. Let's have two minutes of like discuss with the person next to you, and then maybe two to three. So do we stop? I think we just leave it. I think we just let it go. So we're working on this worksheet. Should we do this or is that weird? Intro to limits, which can be found on the website.
All right, so let's talk. Let's talk about this problem because I I think seventy percent of the class figured it out. Um, five sine two x over x. Um, what are we What are we doing? What's going on here? Can someone give me like a give me like a ten second explanation about what's happening? What's happening? I don't know, Stephen. What's happening? Describe the the scene. Yep. Um, He's mumbling something about trig identities, but even before that, like, what's maybe even even just like just for just to start, Laura. I mean, what what might we do just like immediately? Look at the graph function and like look at it because it's like really the period just. Like, as you get closer and closer to zero, we graph this last semester. It just starts oscillating really fast, and oh. then it oscillates indefinitely, so there's no limit. Oh, except that's a different function. Oh. Um, but do you have, so, all right, so um, Lars mentioning some memory of something that we did last semester, which is, like, relevant here. Yeah, I agree. Something that we did last semester is definitely relevant. But even just, like, the very, very first thing that we do, what do we do? I say that sine x is about x when x is about zero. Okay, yeah, all that. Okay, but even just like, all right, just, just, just plug in zero. Just, I mean, just before you can do anything, you should just try. Just try to plug in zero. If you plug in zero, what happens? You get zero over zero. So that, that needs to be like a mental step that you go through, though, right? I mean, you try to plug in zero. Uh, the numerator is roughly, I mean, you guys were just skipping over that because you felt like it was like too obvious to warrant to mention. But yeah, if we try to plug in zero, we get zero on the top, and we also get zero on the bottom, which means... I know nothing, right? That's what that means. I, know, I have something which is very, very tiny over something which is very, very tiny. And uh, we've seen examples at the very end of last class in which that situation is unreliable. So that means we, that means we need to go back and we need to try something else. Okay, so, um, so he said something, several of you said something about like trig identity. Well, you said something about trig identities, right? Yeah, we can do a trig identity. So this is um, sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. So this becomes 10 uh, sine x cosine x over x. Um, all right, why was that helpful, or is that helpful? Because um, then cosine x, when x is near zero, cosine x is going to be about one. So it's pretty much one, I agree. So you can just kind of get rid of that. Okay, yeah, I'll yeah. mentally get rid of it. And then <laughs> sine x over x is one, actually. Yeah, so you believe right. Yeah, so this is just something that we did last semester. This is something that we did kind of informally, and hopefully most of you have retained this fact. And um, Laura, this is how it came up. Uh, out of pretty much out of nowhere, last semester I said, "Hey guys, we are going to graph the function sine x over x." And then you know we pretty much did graph it, right? So tell me like three things about this function. It's like really fast. Someone, Kendall, tell me one thing. Someone else, something else. I'm gonna tell me something. Wait, when x is really small, sine x is about x. Okay, yeah. So she wants to tell me she's going right to the end. Oh yeah, okay, forget it. I'm tired of calling on you guys. I'm just gonna do this myself. So sine x over x. What are the what are the important features of this graph? Um, I don't know. One thing we might notice is that the domain is um, everything except zero, because you certainly can't plug zero in there. Another thing that you might notice is um, end behavior. Uh, what is the limit as x goes to infinity? I'll just write now. I'm not sure if I wrote it that way last semester or not. Um, but what is the limit? Don't know. We don't know. No, I feel like we know. 
Oh, over. I feel like we know, right? This is going to be zero because this thing in the denominator is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, yet the thing in the numerator is going to stay something between negative one and one. So this is definitely going to zero. All right. So I know some. I know some things about n behavior. I know some things about the domain uh, roots. Where are the roots of this function? There's quite a few. Of them. Quite a few of them. Yeah. I feel like there's an infinite number of them. Um, yeah. It's quite a few. Yeah. Uh, so when? Yeah. When's this function going to be zero? Lots of times, yeah, whenever, um, you guys are all being like sarcastic, lots of times, a few, <laughs> quite a few roots, if I don't say so myself. Yeah, so there will be a root whenever sine is zero, this function will be zero, so there are going to be roots at k pi, says me, okay, not counting k equals zero. Uh, well, no, one more other thing that very much helped us with the shape, overall shape of this graph. The envelope thing, yeah, can you elaborate, Eo, and whoever else whispered that? Yeah, true fact. Sine x is always between negative 1 and 1. So just taking x to be positive for the moment, I can divide through all three sides of this by x. And if I do that, I get that this function lies between negative 1 over x and 1 over x. So that means when I go to graph this, I know that there is going to be so and there's going to be some kind of like envelope, right? So this function must live inside these things. And then um, there are roots all over the place. Like there's one at pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, boom, 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 boom. And um, Probably like one more thing worth mentioning about this. Yes? Even. It is even. Yeah, it's pretty important. That means they only have half the work to do. So this is an even function with a negative 1 over x, 1 over x envelope, roots at k pi, limit is 0. So all of this happened, and we were all feeling so smart and awesome about ourselves, and we point plotted, and is this coming back to you? Yeah. Glo these big glorious adventures in pre-calculus. So... And then, something like that. Um, okay, so, what? I feel like some weird things happened there, but never mind. Don't look at this too carefully. Um, so, good. Then there was a mystery, and the mystery was what happens at zero. And depending on what period you're in, there was vigorous discussion on this. And I pretty much like pumped all of you guys, where I was like, some of you kind of like pretended to believe certain things and tried to manipulate the class um, into like panic. What? You were absent that day? Oh, uh, I missed the quadratic formula when I was in my Oh, Always absent on the important days. <laughs> Always absent on the important days. Never be absent ever. That's the rule. Um, so, we thought the question that we had at the time was what happens at zero? And there were some of you who were confident that uh, very near zero, the bottom would be tiny and thus it would like blow up. And some of you. Um, thought it, there was going to be an asymptote there. Others of you noticed that sine is zero at zero, and thus you thought that it would be near zero. Other people just didn't know what, what to do. Yeah. Um, and actually, um, it's so cute, looking back, it was just a couple months ago. What was that? That was a zero over zero indeterminate form. But we did not have the formal language of calculus to explain it. Uh, how did we uh, explain it eventually? How did we determine what the answer was? Yeah, we drew a huge circle. Um, we drew a circle, and we remembered what actually the definition of the sine function is. And the answer is, um, if you do trig in radians, which you have to do for calculus, pretty much for this reason, that sine is defined to be the length of uh, an arc on the, no, what? X. Uh, the input to the sine function is the length of an arc on the unit circle, and then sine is defined uh, inherently geometrically as the height um, the, of that, that, that point is, or the y-coordinate of that point, where the arc ends. Uh, and so uh, what we see is that sine x is always a little bit less than x, and then pretty much, this was pretty much our proof. It wasn't really a proof, it was more of just like a believe it. Um, if x gets very, very, very small, then the length of this half chord and the length of this arc kind of like approach each other because the arc gets less and less curvy and more and more line-like. 
All right, so I don't think I phrased it this way at the time, but I'll phrase it this way now. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. All right, at least I believe that that's true. So should you at the moment. So remembering this was, was, was pretty key to being able to do this problem, I suppose. This is, this is what, at least what's how Stephen did it and how I saw, how I saw it on most of your papers. Um, all right, now I have to do some kind of like rule of limits, which I hope this is a rule, because it seems like pretty reasonable. Uh, and the rule of limit says that I can split a limit of a product of things up into the product of limits. You guys probably didn't even bother with this step, but I'll do it now. Um, so something like this, right? And actually, that kind of makes sense because you know if this is going to if ten cos x is going to some kind of number and sine x over x is going to some kind of number, then does it seem reasonable that the product of those two would go to that same number? It seems reasonable to me. So yeah, as you guys told me, cosine of zero is basically one. So this is ten, and this we just remembered is one. So this whole thing is ten. Cool. Cool. Okay. There was another way. Did anyone do it differently? There's like at least another. There's at least one or two other ways to do it. Yes, yes. I did it basically the same. Instead of like doing out the sine formula, I just did y equals x over x. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So here, if you know that this is going down to negative infinity, we just write negative infinity instead of writing does not exist. Does this make sense? Yo. But if you don't want them to steal your sandwich. If you don't want them to steal your sandwich, <laughs> then you can write it does not exist. Okay. All right. Um, good. This is pretty much, by the way, this is the kind of, these are the kinds of things you need to learn when you become a professional liar, like lawyers and stuff. So if you want to be a lawyer, you have to learn how to, or like a politician, you have to learn how to say, like, you know, exactly enough so it's technically correct, but actually just a total lie. Um, what else? Um, we had more problems. Number three, I don't think, did I tell you how to do this? No. Did you just figure it out? It looks like some of you figured it out. Or it was in the book, or someone just told you? What do you do in this situation? What's the first thing you should do? Try to figure it out. Test two. Test two, yes, exactly. Test two, plug in two. When you plug in two, you get zero over zero. Wow, wow, wow. Indeterminate form, I don't know. Back to work. Sandy, what can we do next? Algebra. Which algebra? We only took one. What? Did we take? We only took one. We only took one. What? Algebra. Only took one algebra class. Wait, what? I saw it like on most of your papers. Oh yeah, that's the fancy way. There's a little bit less fancy way. Wait, no one knows how to do this. I saw it on most of your papers. Most of you figured it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you do, Kendall? Yeah. Uh, multiply by the conjugate. <laughs> multiply by the conjugate. She beats you to it. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you do this thing where you multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus x, is this what you're talking about, right? Yeah, if you multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus x minus 1, then that's going to be awesome. If you didn't do this, you pretty much need to do this now. So just like do it now really fast, and all of your problems will be solved. Uh, because, I'll just do it now, this is going to get 1 minus, x minus 1, being careful with like parentheses and stuff. Raise your hand if you, if you did this. Like, somehow you figured out that this is what you need to do. Yeah, okay, most people. Um, and then, that's like, yeah. Um, so, we get a happy cancel with negative one residue and I now have this. And like magic, it is now no longer in the form zero over zero. When I try to plug in two, I get, I get negative a half. Where's any of you got negative a half? I saw it. It seemed like most, like half the class or more, 60, 70%. All right. Um, then, uh, Kertzma did some kind of, by the way, you can't pronounce your own name, which is hilarious. I'm when you cool. introduced yourself on the video, you tried to pronounce your name correctly and you messed up. That's kind of weird. Like, it's really funny. Yeah. Alright, it's okay. Um, so, um, what, 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 oh yeah, what did you do? So he did something which is, which is basically the same thing, but a little bit fancier. I'm going to do the x minus 2 on the bottom, x minus 1, like in quantity minus 1. And then factor that, like his difference of uh, squares. Yeah, he factored x minus 2 as 1 minus root x minus 1 times 1, is this what you did, right? Yeah. Plus root x minus 1. It ends up being the same thing. How he solved it. Root x minus 1 minus 1. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so root x minus 1 minus 1 times root x minus 1 plus 1, and if you multiply that out, you get x minus 1 minus 1, which is x minus 2. And then these two cancel. You guys see this? It's pretty much the same thing. Well, with the negative 1, and so you end up at the same spot. Um, okay, cool, negative out. And then the other problem was basically almost the exact same thing. Number 7 was almost the exact same thing, so I guess if you didn't get 3, you didn't get 7 either. Or, I don't know, did you? Yeah, seven was easy. Oh, that was that time it was obvious? Yeah. What'd you do for this one? Multiply. Which, which, you multiply by the conjugate? Okay, yeah. So if you multiply by the conjugate, again, um, again, if you try to plug in four, you get zero over zero. So if you multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate, you will get x minus four over x minus four. That cancels. And so this is the limit as x goes to 4 of 1 over um, root x plus 2. You can also factor it. You could also factor it. You could also do the cool way like you did. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm skipping some steps because it's almost the exact same thing. Final answer, 1 4. So this is just more and more evidence that you simply cannot predict. When your limit is in the form 0 over 0, you just can't predict what's going to happen. You can get negative a half, you can get 1 4, you can get 10, you can get 3. Should we do number 4? 
Um, yeah. yeah, number four. Number four, we're definitely going to do four. Number four is kind of like a mean trick to just see if you're on the ball or if you're just mindlessly doing stuff without knowing why. So what should we do for number four? What do we do number four? Multiply by the conjugate, she question says. Mark, question wow, wow, mark. Question question mark. Mark. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so, so, so yeah, you are, I, I, I laid a trap for you that maybe you would just start mindlessly multiplying by the conjugate just because, which leads you into just a rabbit hole of nothingness. <laughs> yeah, Multiple really mixed metaphors going on there. What should we do instead? First, we should test. We should test. So, let's see. If we plug in 3, the numerator is pretty much 2. The denominator is pretty much 0. Zero. So this is not a 0 over 0 situation. This is a 2 over 0 situation. And what if I... What, what, is, what is 2 over 0? Nothing. It's like garbage. Garbage, nothing. Okay, actual 2 over 0 is garbage, but this is not actual 2 over 0. This is 2 over almost 0. It's actually almost 2 over almost 0. Almost 2 over almost 0. So that's kind of some kind of like infinity or negative infinity or something like that. And it appears to depend, perhaps on whether it's a little bit more or a little bit less than zero. So actually, I need to be able to be able to answer this question to the best of my ability. I need to know whether that's a little bit more than zero or a little bit less than zero. And it seems to kind of depend. So at this point, you don't know the answer yet, and you have to go try some stuff. So I, I think this is, I bet this is what some of you did, which is to now go back and, see, and say, OK, what's the limit as x approaches 3 minus? And what is the limit as x approaches 3 plus? Is this what you guys did, some of you? Yeah. Yes. Um, and yeah, what does happen actually? Well, when I plug in which is a little bit less than three, I'm getting in the numerator here basically two. Yeah. Down here, what am I getting? So this is just we're, this is just kind of fake calculus type type real reasoning real going on right now. Like I guess it's real calculus. I don't know. I can't tell the difference anymore. Um, it's all real <laughs> slash all fake to me. Wait, so this is calculus? Now? Yeah, we are. Yeah, it's true. It, it is actual calculus, I guess. Yeah. So this is three minus. So this is blah 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 blah. We're doing actual calculus. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. seems like it. So it says on her. That's what. Kind of, kind of. Um, so that's what it says on her schedule. Yeah, three minus. So if you plug in three minus, you get pretty much this is a little bit less than nine. So the square root of that is a little bit less than three. A little bit less than three minus three. Tiny negative. And what is two over a tiny negative number? Negative. Negative. Okay, and whereas over here when I plug in with a little bit more than 3, this is going to be 2 over, yeah, because that's a little bit more than 9, so the square root of that is a little bit more than 3, a little bit more than 3 minus 3 is a tiny positive, and so this is basically infinity. Okay, so just to the left of 3, this is going to negative infinity, just to the right of 3, this is going to infinity, so we just say this limit does not exist. And on your paper, you're going to say something like, it does not exist because, and then all of this work should be there, because this, all this work tells me that you know exactly what you're doing. All right. Um, was there one more? There was. Number eight. Number eight was also kind of like a problem, which seemed like you had to do a lot of things, but really you didn't. I think, I, I think this problem might have been a mistake, which then I just decided to leave. But um, you can factor it and stuff, but you don't actually even need to, because when you plug in 4, on the top you get 0, and on the bottom you get something which is not 0. 16 minus 7 is 9 minus 24, so you get negative 15. So this is just 0. Man. Man. All that factoring. Um, okay, Magna, questions? Oh, no. Where'd that come from? Talk to her about this problem. I don't understand what you're doing. All she did is that she, instead of making x minus 4 0, she made x minus 4 1. All right, how are we feeling on these oh, limits? Okay. Raymond, how are we feeling? Good. Okay, if you're good, I'm good. Do you want this worksheet? No, I don't think so. I think it's like classwork. Um, so, um, Mateo, there was also homework. Actually, should we, 
Do we talk about that homework for like a few minutes? Or maybe we don't even need to, I don't know. Do we do like I mean, one house? Well, no. I only had a couple questions. Okay, we can go over a couple questions. So, Wait, Sydney, are you talking to me or are you talking to Alice? What? Do you have some questions? Yeah, okay, like what was the number one part B? From the like freak out kind of, right? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I asked you guys to skim chapter one. Did anybody actually do that? Yes, I did. And took notes. Oh, really? Did you find that it was like things that you already knew, generally speaking? What? Did you find that it was things you already knew or yeah. things you learned in the book or so? Yeah. Um, yeah, this book is pretty good. The, the, here, like, here's, our, here's our textbook. By the way, if you're following at home, you should get this book, which is available on Amazon. Wait, what? If you don't what? have it at home? No, I'm talking to my oh. um, millions of internet followers. <laughs> my millions of internet followers are going to um, see the intro video in which I explain all this, and they are going to possibly buy this book and do the homework. No one's going to do this. <laughs> no one's going to do this. Um, no, I haven't made the intro video yet, but... Um, so... But the website is up now. I also watched myself and realized that I'm the worst speaker in the entire world. I didn't. No one told me I was saying this many ums and yeah, uhs yeah. and like. And you sound terrible. Bad. I'm trying really hard. I am trying hard to speak very well today. Um, so in this, in this chapter one, I no, I should be more formal. No. 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 I'm gonna try to say um and uh less and like. <laughs> so, um, in this chapter one, they just teach you a bunch of stuff about like functions and domains and function properties and inverse functions and inverse trig functions and restricting the domain of inverse functions. If you feel like you're a little shaky on these things, now would be the time to get in there and um, do read that carefully. Um, properties of logarithms, properties of exponents, stuff like that. Then I just decided to give you like one or two quick questions on this. Um, I wasn't necessarily <laughs> intending to go over this, but I suppose we can. Uh, it was just a problem. Why is everyone laughing? Because he keeps saying, oh. Oh. <laughs> I think it's because I just hang out with teenagers all the time. I don't think I used to talk like such an idiot. I'm blaming <laughs> you. All right. So, hanging out with teenagers all right. So, what do we do here? We complete the square. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Boom, and then we need a nine, and we need a 16. So this is pretty much like an algebra two situation. We have x minus three squared plus y minus four squared equals 25. So what is that? It is a circle with center three, four, and radius five, which they graphed for you also, yeah. by the way. So, and then one, two, three, four, five, 